Welcome back to Sensible 2020. I'm your event host, Seth Adler, honored, and it is a pleasure, and also I'm humbled uh, to be doing this. This next session uh, is another great one, uh, taking drug policy reform off campus. Your moderator is Randy Davis. Randy? I'm Randy Davis. I'm a graduate student at Kent State University. I've been involved with SSDP since 2016. Uh, I've been our chapter leader and many other positions, and uh, I'm excited to be moderating this panel today about taking drug policy reform off campus. Uh, to be honest, this is not my biggest area of expertise, but I kind of offer a little interesting background to kind of help push this conversation along. So what I like to do is get an introductory question going for our two panelists um, to start with just the general question of what sort of advocacy have you done outside of a campus setting or with a community group? I'll go first. Uh, so I'm Zachary Dubell. I'm the current president and former vice president of Fair State University chapter of Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Um, I started in 2017, I believe. Currently, I work for a group called uh, Next Gen Michigan, uh, which is primarily focused on advocacy between the ages of uh, 18 and 35 year olds. Um, and throughout my history, um, a lot of my work with SSDP and with NextGen is off campus. Um, the problems on campus tend to bleed um, off them too. Uh, I've worked with MI Legalize as well as NextGen and SSDP on Prop 1 here in Michigan, uh, which is legalizing marijuana. Um, I've held events with our Chief Justice uh, McCormick. Uh, on criminal justice reform, a lot of town halls. I've uh, worked on voter pocket voter guides with the Secretary of State, which are currently in use, which um, kind of define what the changes to Michigan voting laws are. Um, I've done direct harm reduction work with groups like the Red Project in Grand Rapids doing Narcan trainings, uh, as well as, of course, Dance Safe. Um, everyone in SSDP loves Dance Safe. Um, so, uh, the scope of my activism outside of campus is pretty varied. Uh, I've worked with quite a bit of groups. Hi, my name is Jules or Julian Hodge. I'm pronouns are they, them, out, and I'm a senior at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Some of my off-campus advocacy work has included helping to uh, manage volunteers for a city council campaign in my college town. I helped run Decriminalize Santa Cruz, which decriminalized amphiogenic plants and fungi in town. I have also done some work with Dan Safe. I've done some work with the Local Harm Reduction Coalition. And I've also just done other various kinds of work around town. Well, excellent. Thanks, guys. Um, that's a good way to start this off for sure. You know, I mean, you've both had a lot of experience so far um, in your young careers, and I think that um, you know, continuing on, you're going to set examples for our future um, new incoming SSDP members for like what they can do. So I guess that's really what we want to start with. Um, so if I'm a new student, I'm joining and I'm trying to figure out well, what am I supposed to do with, you know, what I want to do in my life and how can I figure out how to get drug policy reform involved with like whatever I'm interested in. So, you know, I mean, the real answer to that is just to find an issue that helps to um, orient those goals together. So, um, you know, I, what I'm wondering is how can someone find these issues that they can work towards to affect drug policy reform off campus with or without SSDP? With me, it was just keeping an eye on the news and seeing what other towns around us were doing. I live in Santa Cruz, we're just, an, an hour or two away from Oakland, where they had just recently passed the Decriminalized Nature Initiative, which is basically the same thing we passed. And since we were in such close proximity, we wanted to continue that momentum, and we did the same thing in our town. And as we were working on this in our town, we found more people that were interested in the same kind of issues. And as we found people who were able to figure out other kinds of goals we had in common and come up with new issues from that, we could push forward. Cool. Zach, do you have anything to add? Yep. Um, so in my experience, um, there's 
probably there's two ways you can go about it. Um, I found partners uh, with decriminalized. They had momentum and they had they have a movement already available. That's probably the easiest route you can go. Uh, but I live in Big Rapids, Michigan, which is in northern Michigan. I go to Ferris State. I live in a town of 10,000 people without the university. Um, so in my area, I learned to uh, make it about drug policy, anything I work on. Um, you know, if I'm working, when I work with NextGen, we have to, or we focus on uh, 18 to 35 year olds. How do we get them politically engaged? Um, you know, in my I've brought to them uh, drug policy. Drug policy, in my experience, has been uh, if you if you make it about drug policy with the youth, they tend to get engaged. And uh, really, just showing up to local government meetings as well. In my area, we had Prop One pass here in Michigan, uh, but what it also allowed is that townships and cities and counties could opt out of it. Um, if you do not opt out of Prop 1, which is allowing marijuana shops to open as well as processing and transporting, uh, then it's going to be operating in your area. Uh, our town ended up um, opting in, but according to our town charter, with one third or 10% the last mayoral elect electoral turnout rate, if you can get that many people to sign a petition, it goes to a vote. So on March 10th, uh, we they were to, they voted on it again in our area, uh, which we ended up passing it. Um, we held SSDP held a huge event at a bar and got people to early vote before spring break, um, and we were able to make that connection with them. We were able to really localize that issue of of, of marijuana um, into our area and get people engaged. Yeah, you you definitely helped to bring that up to your city and the place where you live or you care about, you know, that's, it's good to, you know, have that experience to, um, you know, move, move forward to these initiatives that like, you know, a lot of people have culminated the idea that like, oh, this is such a, you know, a thing that we want to have here. And, um, you know, it, it takes these, you know, advocates like you to really push that forward and being able to like coalesce and finding those opportunities is, um, is, you know, basically what, what needs to happen for um, helping to move drug policy reform off campus forward. Uh, so let's, let's continue and um, let's say, you know, for someone else who's not maybe with a specific situation that's like ready to, um, you know, enact drug policy with, you know, where, where could someone go to start to find organizations um, that they could even begin some sort of campaign to, uh, to create some drug policy reform? Uh, like I said in my previous answer, I definitely think uh, local government meetings are overlooked. Um, we found a lot of partners, uh, like with Our Revolution, who does a lot of Laura's Bernie volunteers, uh, just by showing up to you know city commission meetings. Uh, there's less than two people in the crowd usually, unless you're in you know a bigger city like Detroit. So I really think that's, that's probably one of the most effective ways to find them locally. Um, but if you're looking at more, more large scale groups, uh, you can, I've always found them through uh, people I know, especially within SSDP. Um, you know, we tend to build a lot of coalition within this movement. So it, you know, just asking people, it, you know, is there people who work on uh, syringe exchange in my area? Just asking, you know, SSDP, your movement building fellow, um, is just even a great start. They can point you in the right direction. I have to totally agree with the movement fellow thing. I definitely met one or two people through my movement building fellow that did help to advise my group a lot. It also really came from connections that me and my friend made within the community. I made a good connection that really helped us when I was working on the city council campaign back in 2018 that helped us out when we were doing this a year later. Also, I was speaking on a panel at a dispensary once and I connected with one of the other panelists who came a really good help of ours. Another one of my friends is involved in the local political, one of the local political parties and had contacts with Decriminalized California and they were all able to find us contacts or get us help from the organizations that, that, that they themselves are in that really helped to push our movement along. Yeah, great answers from both of you. Thank you. I mean, it's it's really so important to emphasize how important 
network building is and being able to just um, talk with anybody. You might not even know what they are involved with, what they, um, what their expertise is or who, who they may be connected to that can help move forward a movement or move forward any idea. Um, for me, for example, like I thankfully haven't had any uh, major things yet, but just joined a uh, chemistry organization, the American Chemical Society. And through, through that, you know, I'm, I'm already looking towards ideas in my career to help move forward with drug policy. Hopefully that will um, work, work in my favor for everyone as well. But uh, yeah, I, I think that um, we're, we're starting to think about these, you know, ideas and now we maybe have something that's a bit concrete. We want to move something forward a bit further, but uh, how do we really impact um, with the group these strategies um, to help implement change? Like what are the effective strategies that can um, help to implement policy changes in organizations and around local, state, and maybe even federal um, policy change? involves well, splitting up the work. When you find other organizations that are off campus, they, I know what me and my group did is the people that came from on campus, we were completely in charge of rallying the students on campus in support for us and other people in town, they were the ones that like advised us and took a lot of the work working with the people in town because those are the people that they know best. It can also come to which group has the most experience with what. My organization had a lot of experience with event planning. So that's what we did a lot. Uh, one of my other friends who works with one of the cannabis collectives in town, they have a lot of experience working with the city council themselves, with lobbying city council, and with going to the meetings and being in those uh, spaces like that. So they were the ones that did most of the work with that and helped to advise us a lot on what was going on there. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, in my experience, like the, the strategies that I try to implement in my own activism um, tend to work really big on bridge building. Um, I, you know, what my personal views are shouldn't matter to the issue. If I'm working on um, expungement, uh, the fact that I disagree with a libertarian on a separate issue doesn't matter in that we're working on expungement together. Uh, it, for me, I think that's key. I think a lot of people tend to lose lose sight of that. That there is that just because you disagree on something else, something else doesn't mean you can't agree on something. Um, I, especially with my experience as of late um, in this kind of current political climate we live in, that's even more volatile. Um, I've been seeing that more and more, and it really saddens me. Um, I I think strategies to really implement effective drug policy focus on being respectful and calm and focusing on, on pushing the issue, but knowing you know, that, that there's always other people on the other side, they're people. Um, yeah, and knowing that you don't have to build, just build partnership and coalition with people who agree with you, with, um, you know, with us being, with, with NextGen being a progressive org, I don't have to just work with progressive orgs. Um, I can work with, you know, Republicans on something if they agree, you know, they're, you know, while it's, you know, a small, small, small percentage, sometimes there are certain people, you know, people on the other side who do agree with us and are, and are certainly willing to work. Um, so yeah, I think really, really the sort of effective strategy, like, like key, uh, is not to, is really not to over push at first here, here, it was kind of like a domino effect, you know, we get if you get prop one and then all of a sudden people people realize the need for expungement and when you realize the need for expungement they start realizing the need for prison reform in general uh it's it it's it's really a domino effect and um but in order to get that you have to meet somebody where they are you know um and if somebody's not there yet you've got to figure out a way to bring them there so yeah that's great i think i think it's so important to try and find that common ground where you know where political bias may not really impact, especially on the central idea to move something forward and that, that you know, impact that you can have just um, by being a respectful individual with whatever beliefs that you have is um, going to show, you know, others that 
what what you're saying is important and the movements you're working towards have merit. So yeah, thanks thanks for that. Um, I kind of messed up our planning, so I skipped the question. That was the last question, but uh, it's okay. We're gonna we're gonna try and wrap this back around. So, how did you find the organizations that you um, are impacting change with? Like we both said, you know, movement building fellows uh, are definitely key. But honestly, anybody within SSDP, um, I can't tell you how many friends and connections I have within this org. I would not be there's I would not be anywhere I am uh, without SSDP. Um, I found it. You know my sophomore year beginning um and the guy who got me into it uh was on the board of directors mike williams uh you know we all love him he uh he ended up hiring me as his intern for next gen who ended up hiring me as an organizer and you know has promoted me and you know uh really gave me my start uh i found that's the start but when you you know when you get into it and you need to find partners you know, it's always it's always good to look back at people who've been doing this work. Um, we all know groups like Normal, um, but you know those groups can't be overlooked. Those are always great uh, partners, and even if they're not, they can always point you in the right direction. Yes, movement building fellows and getting involved however you can. It doesn't even have to be drug policy related. We got help from knowing people in the Harm Reduction Coalition to advise us, even just working on local city council campaigns or just going to city council meetings can also be very crucial in finding the different organizations that you can make change with. Yeah, it really comes back around to that networking and um, just knowing people. I mean, that's how you can do anything in this world. Uh, is there any other comments that you guys wanted to add um, with regards to some of the other things you've said or something that we may, may have missed here? I mean, I have a question um, for Jules. I think, uh, can you go into a bit deeper on how, how exactly the DCRIM uh, in your area, how you started that? How did you actually, you know, who did you talk to or did you go to like a city councilman and then this person kind of helped you build, build up the, you know, I guess the hype for it, you know, or, uh, you know, how exactly did you get that passed? Yeah, so me and my friend started working on it last June. We set up all the social media pages. My friend went to go meet one-on-one -on -one with one of the city council members, and as he was going into the meeting, the city council member ran out and grabbed the person who was, he was just in the meeting with, who also happened to be talking with him about the same thing. So we paired up a while later, we heard about someone at a libertarian conference we went to just for whatever reason. Um, and I ended up meeting him at a talk that we were both on a panel, we were both speaking at, at a local dispensary. So that's how we got like the main core of four people. We got a lot of other people when we came back for SSDP in the fall. Um, my friend who I met on the panel, he, work, he works, he's on the board for Women for Medical Marijuana which was one of the first organizations in California that helped advocate for medical cannabis. And we were able to get a lot of help from them as well. And also just keep posting on social media and finding other people in town through Facebook groups. Um, we got help through the local Libertarian Party, through the local Bernie Party, through all these different organizations in town because they're just people we happen to know. We mentioned when we were doing stuff and we managed to gather people from them. So did you bring like a huge group of people into a, you know, like a city council meeting, like all, you know, like something like that? Yeah, we had three different city council meetings. Uh, first one was back in December to go over it for the first time. No, it was actually back in November where we went over it for the first time. The second time was in December at a public safety committee, committee meeting at the police station. And the third time was the final meeting. We got the most people there, some of the most amazing testimony, uh, which was where it was voted into law. Yeah, hell yeah. I just thought, um, I just thought it'd be important, you know, to kind of go into that, you know, a little bit more while we're here. Yeah, yeah it's great because, I mean, you see that, um, you know, you built that momentum and that's, that's really where, you know, finding that coalition to, you know, hey, we have this, you know, we want to decrim, let's, let's move forward. And you, you basically explain it better than I could ever have because you did it. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that um, 
this kind of, this might wrap it up for uh, this quick session here, and uh, we'll have a lot more to go forward with on the live Q and A. So, um, definitely, any more closing comments we'd like to add? All right. Well, uh, I'm excited for everyone's questions. Thanks again, Zach and Jules, for your time. Um, and let's move on. <laughs>